This semester we'll be programming in C. We're using C because it simplifies the task of investigating what's going on under the hood when we run a program. One way C helps with this is by giving the programmer direct access to memory using pointers and addresses, which sets us up for learning about memory layout and memory management. Another way C helps us think deeply about systems is through the compiler. When you write a program in a high-level language like C or Python or Java, your computer doesn't actually run the program directly. As we'll see this semester, what the CPU can actually execute is assembly instructions. So the programs we write need to be translated into assembly to actually run. Different languages have different approaches to this translation, and the biggest difference is between compiled or interpreted languages. C is an example of a compiled language, while Python is interpreted. Here, my VS code is connected remotely to Watson, and in my directory I have two programs, a Hello World in Python and a Hello World written in C. I'll also connect to Watson by SSH, and navigate to the same directory with CD, And if I do an ls, then I'll see these two programs in the current directory. And we can run each of these programs from the command line, but in slightly different ways. Python is an interpreted language, which means that when you run python hello.py, the program that's actually running is Python. And that program's job is to read the file hello.py and on the fly translate the Python code into assembly instructions and run those assembly instructions on the CPU. On the other hand, C is a compiled language, which means that to run our C program, we have a separate step of first translating our C code into assembly using a program called a compiler. At the command line, we can run gcc and give it the name of the file containing the code we want to translate from C to assembly. GCC is a compiler, which means that it is a program whose job is to translate other programs. It reads the file containing our C code and creates an executable file containing assembly instructions. After running this command, if we do an ls, we see that we have a new file called a.out. And this is the executable that was produced by GCC. We can run it from the command line with dot slash a dot out. A dot out is the default name that GCC gives to executables, but of course we can change that with command line options. So let's delete a dot out with the rm command. And then let's run GCC again but this time we'll specify minus O for what to name the output that GCC produces and call it hello. And now I have my hello.c program and my executable called hello. If I run dot slash hello, then the assembly that our C code was translated into gets executed by the computer. If we look at this executable in VS Code, it warns us that it's not going to make sense. And in this case, I'll open it anyway. And it just looks like gobbledygook. And the reason it makes no sense is that VS Code is trying to interpret the ones and zeros stored in the file as characters, but this file isn't trying to be a text file. And so the ones and zeros of this file are actually representing instructions to the CPU, not characters that are meant to be human readable. But there are other programs we can use to make a bit more sense of this executable. For example, from the terminal, we can run obj dump space minus d, 
space the name of our executable, and this reads the binary file, figures out what assembly instructions are being represented, and prints a slightly more human readable version of the assembly code. Later in the semester, we'll talk much more about compilers and assembly, and actually write some assembly code of our own. But for now, the important thing to remember is that the steps in running a C program are to compile, creating an executable, and then run that executable with dot slash and its name.